I can't believe I'm, I actually have to say this, but for the first time in a long time, the press was right. I am here to announce that I am officially endorsing Ted Cruz to become the first Hispanic president of the United States. Breaking tonight, Ted Cruz getting a historic endorsement from one of the most iconic conservative voices in the country. Glenn Beck taken to the campaign trail in Iowa Saturday, throwing his support behind a presidential candidate for the first time in nearly 40 years of broadcasting. And with most experts suggesting the GOP race may be down to just two candidates in particular in Iowa, Mr. Beck's endorsement of one of those men came with a lengthy and repeated warning about the other. Mr. Trump is saying over and over again on the road, I will make America great again. I will make America great. That's not true. It's not even possible. Each of us as individuals living our own dreams, making our own way, charting our own course, that is what makes America great. Anything else, anything else is faith in self and it is empty. It's the human ego and it is arrogant and it is dangerous. Glenn Beck is the founder of The Blaze and a number one New York Times bestselling author of The Immortal Nicholas. Glenn, it's great to see you. So why now, after 40 years, did you feel compelled to come out and endorse a candidate? A couple of reasons, uh, Megan. Um, I've never I've never endorsed anybody for any office at all, mainly because half my career, nobody cared. The second half, I've never wanted to put my name on somebody. My credibility I've worked hard for, and I don't. I don't, I'm not going to put my name on, on some guy and then have him go to Washington and, and not be that guy. Um, Ted Cruz, I have watched, and I told him, you know, four years ago when he went into the Senate, I said, you know, I don't know if I trust you. You say all the good things, but um, if you go to Washington, I'm going to be your worst nightmare if you start to be a weasel. And I've watched him closely, and he has not. He has done the tough thing. He has been, you know, David against Goliath in his own party, against the other party, in the media. Nobody will stand with this guy, and yet he's never backed down from the fight. He says... I believe it. This is what I said I would do. I'm going to do but these But you know, things. his detractors, including Donald Trump, see that as not necessarily a positive. Trump calls him a nasty guy who can't get along with anyone, That's calls him a whack job, says he tells lies, and is using his you know, inability to get along with people in Washington as a, as a negative in terms of getting things done. Here's the, here's the part. Donald Trump said this weekend that he is going to, um, look, he, he has to cut deals and we have to be part of the establishment. I'm quoting him. Yeah, I'm going to have to be part of the establishment to be able to get things done. Well, that's the problem. That's what stopped me with Rand Paul. I love Rand Paul, but when he made a deal with um, Mitch McConnell, I, I didn't know if I could trust him. People are tired of deal making, especially when it's not rooted in something. So the second reason um, I decided to to endorse Ted Cruz is A, I believe him, but the second thing is I really truly believe in, and I have a very long record and people made fun of me when I said the caliphate was coming. They said it was absurd and it would never happen. And, and Megan, I tell you, I feel as strongly about this that there are a lot of great people in the Republican Party that you could vote for, a lot of them, and that I could vote for. Um, Donald Trump is not one of them. And the next guy who comes into office is going to finish the fundamental transformation that was started by Woodrow Wilson and accelerated through Barack Obama. We're going to, we're headed for real trouble, Islamic trouble, economic trouble, and civil unrest in the next four or five years. This next president is going to either finish and we're going to become a nation where the pen and the phone are the way to rule, or we're gonna have somebody who has the Constitution in their bones, and they're going to repoint this cornerstone and set it right and give us a new, a new start. But why, why do you, you know, obviously Donald Trump is the front runner by a lot. And so conservatives are, are backing him to some extent, moderates are backing him to some extent, and the country, the GOP, does not feel the way you do. How, how did you get to s this sort of divide uh, where you're over here and most of these Republicans are over here? 
Because I've always been that guy. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, you know, Megan. When I was working there, I was always kind of the guy who's, who's out. Um, Aww, you know, uh, but we loved you. I know, and and I've always loved you. But um, I've always been the guy who is kind of going and marching to my own uh, tune. And I'm, I'm, you know, the one thing I do know are progressives. If there's anything I know, it's a progressive, and. And this is a very dangerous thing. And, and I warned when I was on Fox, I did several episodes on the fact, and this is why I've only been, I've only spoken at CPAC one time and they never, they never invited me back because I said the progressive cancer started from the Republicans and it is in your own party. And I tried to warn on Fox, I did a show, the, the biggest one you could remember is the one where I did with a pendulum. And I said, here's Barack Obama. He's pulled it back so far. It's going to swing the other way and unless you root yourself in the Constitution when that swings back you're gonna have another guy with a pen and with a phone why, and he's gonna do bad why things. would you believe that about Trump I mean all what he, what he says is I am a deal maker I'm an executive I'm worth several billion dollars and I have a history of proving I can get things done that I win as he puts it but, but but that's not, I mean, that's great for a CEO, but that's not the job of a president. The president does, first of all, does not create jobs. He doesn't jam things down your throat. The, the, the president is not supposed to rule by dictate or edict or executive power. He is supposed to make sure that the government acts and behaves the way it's supposed to. It, his, when he raises his hand, I will protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. When we head into trouble, and trouble is coming, you want a guy who says, look, I mean, look, let me say this. We have Lindsey Graham on record saying, I don't have a problem with the NSA spying because you know what, we're at war. Uh, we have, I think it was John McCain who said, um, uh, you know, I love freedom of speech, but you know, there, there's times that that has to be curbed. Uh, you have, um, Barbara Mikulski talking about the Second Amendment, and she said just last week, don't talk to me about this Constitution. Let's get this done. <laughs> it is irritating no, at times, isn't it? You've got to root it in the Constitution. <laughs> All right, wait. I want to stop you there because we have much more to discuss with Glenn, as you can hear, uh, including the attacks that have come down against him since this announcement became public and his thoughts on another endorsement uh, that occurred last week, that of Sarah Palin for Donald Trump. Stay tuned. Glenn Beck calling. Show, be on my show, be on my show. Guy, every time I see him, he's a weird guy. He's always crying. He's always, <laughs> he's a weird dude.